initially when we took the initial stance of opening into the indoor dining van, there was a, quite a few restaurants that were willing to do it with us and they all backed down last minute uh, out of fear, which is completely understandable. I mean, restaurants at that point were in massive debt. Everyone was just trying to hang on. Everyone was just trying to get through thinking this was gonna be the last thing. So I get it, but now we know, we know their game plan, we know how they operate. And so if this doesn't seem right to you, if they try to implement passports again or close down again, we all need to start asking the questions. We all need to email, we need to call relentlessly. We need to demand the proof to close. Hello, Freedom Family and Truth Seekers, and more specifically, business owners and restaurateurs across Canada. Um, today, I have Rebecca Matthews from Corduroy Restaurant on with me, and we're going to be talking about her freedom fight in the last year and a half or the last two years with regards to the government mandates and the enforcing masks and a vaccine passport and what she did to stand up to the government, stand in her power and the consequences of her actions. Rebecca, thank you so much for making time to, to have this conversation with me today. Thank you for being here. How are you? I'm doing good. I got baby on me as always. So I apologize for any little sniffles, but he just fell asleep. So we should be good. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I don't want to wake up the baby. Um, I do want to talk about your restaurant and everything that you went through last year. So you were shut down last year. Um, I think that was in um when was that that you were shut down i know i get some stuff it's been two years it's so uh last year 2021 in the spring was the first closure order that we received mm -hmm. um we initially when this whole pandemic started in 2020 right is that when it started 2020 yeah. um we actually ended up they closed restaurants uh, they closed all businesses for a couple of weeks to flatten the curve right and um we decided to actually just close our business we thought it would only be a few months we thought you know what let's we don't know what this is let's ride this out let's give the staff a break because everyone's freaking out so we decided to close our business completely while we waited to see what this was um and then we realized this thing wasn't going away uh but eventually to get back up and running and rehire staff it ended up being a six-month closure so then we opened up back up in about august i want to say Things were going great, business was good. And then within a couple of days, they shut restaurants down to, they had to close at 10 and they had to run at half capacity. And that's like, as all business owners will know, that the margins in restaurants especially are so small. So any sort of limit to what, how you can operate, it's gonna have detrimental effects. Um, so that was the first blow. And then it was one thing after another, they just kept seeming like they were just, putting a lot of things on us, making us close early, all of a sudden saying we had to do this and that. And then in the spring of 2021, um, they said, okay, sorry guys, we're have to close restaurants for only gonna be a couple weeks again. Um, but if you have a patio, you can serve on the patio. And so we don't have a patio. And we noticed all the big chain restaurants that had massive parking lots were erecting these huge tents that were essentially inside, but outside. So they could operate, they were probably, even larger amount of seats in their businesses than they were without those tents. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, sure, no problem, no no harm to us. And here we are, we're completely closed. Um, and at the, it's, it had been a year at this point, we knew it was going on. I had asked for freedom of information requests on asking for the data around why restaurants were considered unsafe and sh where are you getting these numbers from? Because we didn't have one COVID case, not amongst our staff or customer trace back. Um, and we're trying to figure out, well, where, why are they pinning it all on re restaurants? Um, and we couldn't get that information. And every time it would come back, sorry, we don't have that data. So we're like, well, why are you closing restaurants if you don't have the data to support it? So we decided to peacefully protest. A lot of people think, well, we just decided to open because we wanted to make money. That's not the point. The point of it was to say, hey, look, this is not right. You're closing businesses. It has a huge effect on small business owners, their families, their staff. There, you know, it's a ripple effect. Um, you're not giving us the data to support this. You're not showing us how we can operate in any other way. We're going to open, um, and so we decided to open against the indoor dining ban. We had a really great weekend. It was super busy, uh, and then they closed us a few days later. Um, it was about a month where we had to remain closed. They wanted us to submit a COVID nineteen safety plan. Once we submitted that and said we were going to do this and that, uh, we were reopened. 
summer went through, things were kind of normal, mandates got lifted with the masks, and uh, then we hear the doom and gloom of the Vax passport coming into effect, and we knew immediately we were not going to check that. Um, morally, it's not right. Uh, scientifically, it's not right. It doesn't make sense. And uh, we were not going to participate in their coercion, and that's what it was, and we found this out. We knew it was, but we had confirmation from the Vancouver Coastal Health Officer who stated we're actually not seeing high transmission in these places. However, it increases uptake of vaccination amongst the population, which is coercion, which is illegal. So we refused to participate in that. Um, we publicly made a stance on that. Uh, again, asked for freedom of information requests, nothing came back. And then I was I combed the PHO order to find out, okay, well, there's got to be some other way for restaurants to operate. They can't force us to do this. And as I was going through it and looking at it for days, I realized, well, wait a minute, fast food restaurants are exempt. They don't have to check, either do coffee shops or counter service establishments. So I said, okay, fine, we're gonna be fast food counter service. If that's considered safe, we should be able to operate just like they can, what's the difference? Uh, so that's what we decided to do. We switched our model of service. Everyone had to order before they sat down. Uh, we even put a time limit on our tables, one uh, to implement the fast food model, but also we were so busy and we wanted to make sure we provided a space for everybody um, mm -hmm. that you know we got everybody in that was waiting in the lineup. Operated like that for a couple of months and then they closed us down uh, because we were serving alcohol. And we said, well, can you show us why we can't serve alcohol? Why someone can have a glass of wine with their dinner? And why is it different than someone sitting and having coffee with their muffin? Um, of course, they don't have that information. But then they finally let us, they said, okay, well, fine, you can open up. You don't check passports, but you can't serve alcohol. And we decided to take that option. Everyone thought we won a big court case. Um, everyone thought we lost our liquor license. Neither of that is true. They simply just made us sign a contract saying we would not serve alcohol on premise. We could still sell it for takeaway. Um, and we brought in a high-end al alcohol-free uh, product with different varieties of drinks and beer and wine. And we operated like that up until just recently, up until April 8th, when the mandates got lifted and now we can serve alcohol. Wow. That's so <laughs> basically, you did a lot of your own homework and your own research and you just stood like under your own authority and you stood up to the powers that be and you just kept on asking questions, which they didn't have the answers to. Correct. Um, if there what kind of advice would you give to other restaurateurs and business owners that just complied and went along with the mandates and, and everything? Um, first do a gut check, ask yourself, does this feel right? If it doesn't, then you need to take a stand. You don't have to go against your own intuition, your own moral standards, just because the government is saying so, especially when we know they don't have the data to back it up. Um, so first ask yourself, does this really feel right as a human being to do this to other people or to how, to how to operate your business? If that's a no, then obviously band together. And initially, when we took the initial stance of opening against the indoor dining ban, there was a, quite a few restaurants that were willing to do it with us. And they all backed down last minute uh, out of fear, which is completely understandable. I mean, restaurants at that point were in massive debt. Everyone was just trying to hang on. Everyone was just trying to get through thinking this was gonna be the last thing. So I get it, but now we know, we know their game plan, we know how they operate. And so if this doesn't seem right to you, if they try to implement passports again or close down again, we all need to start asking the questions. We all need to email, we need to call relentlessly. We need to demand the proof to close a business because it's not just simply closing a business, you're affecting the, the livability, like a family that survives on that to feed their family, to pay for the roof over their head. You need to seriously back this up that this is the right thing to do. And now that we can see, it's been two years later, we can see from across the world, it really doesn't help. Right. Closing, closing the businesses doesn't help. So if this happens again, we really do need to band together. And like you said, it's simply just asking the questions. It's not like, it's not just saying no, ask the questions, say, well, can you show me how this is helpful? Can you show me how my business is dangerous? Can you show me that what we're doing is more dangerous than Costco mm -hmm. or another big chain establishment that is packed, but they can still operate? Please show us the proof before you close my business and affect not only myself, but the community and everyone around. Right. Um, so yeah, it's asking the questions and joining together and we are working. It's slow and go because I've 
got the baby here, but we're working on um, a platform where businesses can sign up to join mm. and be in correspondence uh, with one another. So when and if this happens again, we will have a one stop shop where people can sign up and get support network. Um, yeah. Yeah. Figure yeah. out what net, what to do, how we're going to operate, uh, communicate, all that. So Amazing. it's coming. <laughs> well, over the last couple of years, you've definitely attracted a lot of the freedom crowd and a lot of the like-minded tribe. And um, you also have an Instagram page that I absolutely love. Uh, do you have TikTok and Instagram or or? No, I don't have TikTok because I, I think it's spyware. Right, <laughs> I'm sure right, it, right, I mean, right. it, I mean, it right. all is, but I just never I'm, got into the TikTok. <laughs> that's right. I'm just thinking about all of the videos that you do that are not only extremely entertaining, but um, very informative <laughs> and educational and common sense. So I really appreciate your Instagram. And I think that people need to share this kind of information because as we know, it's not all about health. All of this entire pandemic was not all about health. All of the government um, rules and regulations and mandates were more about control. And that has uh, more of a global plan, a global genocidal plan behind it. So um, thank you for everything that you've been doing and for educating people and bringing people together and bringing that support network together. Um, like you said, in, in the fall, if this were to happen again, it would be really nice to have a support network for all of the business owners to to, um, to kind of compare notes and because it's all about asking questions and finding out the information. Um, is there anything else that you would do differently come next fall if they were to implement um, another mandate or like a, a mask mandate or a vaccine passport? Okay, first of all, do you do you foresee that happening? And second of all, what would you do if it did? What would you do? Um, if you asked me that a month ago, I would say 100% it's happening again. But in the last month, I've felt a bit of a shift. And I feel I'm sure other people have noticed it seems like things are not crumbling, but there's cracks happening. And there's little court cases being won. Um, our prime minister seems to be losing it. Like there's these little pieces that are happening and I feel like it's not as easy. They're, they're trying to rethink their plan here because the, the ultimate end goal, I believe is digital ID. I do believe that is what their target is. And I think they were hoping to implement that in the fall, but I feel like it's being pushed back. So I think we have time, um, which is why we need to stand our ground and not let our foot off the gas when it comes to this. I know it feels like things are opening up and we have till the fall, but we really need to keep pressing that we are not okay with this happening in our country. Okay. And um, I think we have the power to make a change and I can feel it. So I'm 50-50 I'm right now. I say this 50% chance it's coming back in the fall and 50% we, we've squashed it. So We'll see. But if it does come back in the fall, it's going to be everyone's going to need that third one. Um, and so I think it's also, um, I don't know if you guys follow Trailblazer Media, but she's got these call to actions and these campaigns going um, to bring awareness to the people that have maybe been on the fence or felt like something's wrong, but they just participated because they felt they had to. I mean, we know a lot of people were coerced into this. So we're trying to spread the awareness that like, hey, it's okay if you got double or triple or whatever, and you went along and comply with all this stuff, it's okay, you can come back and we need to stand together to save this country because otherwise we're going down. Right. Uh, <laughs> what hard. is it called again? Trailblazer Media, right. named Sarah Swain. Okay. Um, so she's got this big campaign going, a few call to actions. Um, her goal was 10,000 letters sent in to all these different addresses, like WestJet, Air Canada, basically tackling the federal mandate of the, the travel for how people can't get, get on a plane or a train right. or a boat. And then uh, tomorrow, what day is it today? No, Saturday. Yeah, tomorrow. Uh, it's an online protest where it's like, you know, we're, we're, putting up these signs where we are encouraging Justin Trudeau to resign and not in the hope that he's going to see this and be like, okay, I'm out guys. But it's, it's bringing awareness to all the MPs, all the people that are in government office, seeing that the people are unhappy and we hope that they remove themselves from him. And so he has no choice, but to resign. Right. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I will definitely put all of that information in the description below of this video. And I would highly recommend that people also follow you on Instagram and on your Facebook page. I know that you're more active on Instagram. Is there any other platform where people can connect with you? Um, yeah, so it's Quarterway Restaurant on Instagram. And then we do have quarterwayrestaurant.com where you can email. I just am so horrible at checking it. Uh, it's sort of like an afterthought. I'm like, oh yeah, I got to get in my, that inbox. So, but you can send me a message there and I'll get to it eventually. Um, Instagram, you can send me a DM, but I get a lot of in the message request folder and I try to go through them as fast as I can, but the, it sits at a pretty high number. But um, if you comment, it's actually, I realize it's faster. If you comment on one of my posts, I see that. Okay. So you can say like, I sent you a DM. I think I that's how I got you. an old of you. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, yeah. So if you comment on the post, that pops up rather than going to a message folder. So yeah, I would suggest that. Right. Well, thank you very much for all of this information. I think it's not only important for other restaurateurs, but business owners in general right across the country. They could definitely learn from this kind of um, the kind of actions that you took and the research and the questions that you asked. And um I also think that they it, it would benefit everybody to, to find a, a support network and come together with like-minded people in our freedom family. So thank you for sharing this information. And I also, I wanna have so many conversations with you because I just love everything that you're doing. So um, I think that's gonna be it for today, but we will have another conversation coming up in the future here. So everybody, please like this video and subscribe to my channel, Lady Braven of the Pride, because we have these courageous conversations every single solitary day, and they're meant to inspire, encourage, and empower people through these times. So hit the subscribe button, share it with a friend, because as we all know, courage is contagious.